Yes. The big question, we'll start with you, Mickey, is now the time to buy? Now is absolutely the time to buy. You, you've just laid it out there. Prices have cooled off. Um, and that was a much needed cooling, by the way. You know, it was getting a little too hot, too fast for us. So it's welcome to see it. It's not calamitous. It's not crashing. It's just taking a breath. Interest rates, for the past 10 years, we've been crying, you know, rates are going up, rates are going up. And nobody believed us because they kept going down, down, down. So now we're addicted to low interest rates. And we don't even remember, you know, when 6% or 7% was a normal rate. So it is helping people off the fence. These rates are only going higher. Get used to it. Mm -hmm. Get in now before it's too late. How, how, much late, how much lower can they go, Tom? We think that we found, we were kind of at a standoff for, for a bit in the middle part of this past year here in New York City anyway. But we have been transacting deals in the past couple of months. Around late August, a, a, several listings that we had at the time that, that were moving a little bit slowly started to get offers and, and a lot more traffic. So we kind of think that we have found a, a safe landing place. So it's definitely a good time to buy. As we so Mickey, seasonally speaking, how much do prices typically differ between the summer and the winter months? In suburban markets, there's a defined spring season and fall season that actually correlates to the weather because proper, you show properties differently in those markets. Swimming pools, uh, gardens, landscaping matters. In the city, our spring season essentially starts as early as January. So right now, uh, seasonality matters less than market fluctuations. We're just trying to get ahead of the market trends. Around summer, we were, the entire industry was trying to figure out where the market was headed because prices kept going lower and lower and uh, offers were getting lower and lower. And we thought, is this it? And we're waiting to hear the thud. And we kind of think we've hit that sweet spot. So again, making it a great time for buyers to get out there. Uh, Tom, it seems like for a lot of our viewers, especially those that live here in New York, a lot of areas are kind of priced down at, so everybody would either go to Brooklyn or they go to Hudson Yards or they go wherever. <laughs> Where's now the hot place that people should be looking within the greater New York area? We're, we're big on what we're calling the new downtown, which is right around here, Ooh, just outside these it. doors. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're involved with a project at 125 Greenwich Street. And uh, it's, it's getting a lot of attention and uh, really what's happened down here, you know, with the Oculus and everything, all the major brands that have come into the area. So this is... this is So Financial cool. District and Lower Manhattan is kind of the new place to go now. The new downtown. Tremendous. Yes. <laughs> new downtown, I yes. like that we're calling it. Are there any areas that are going out of style? Hmm. Boy, that's a head scratcher. We hate to knock any area, but... <laughs> I, don't, I would say there's no single neighborhood that has a stranglehold on the market the way yeah. it used to. You know, I remember when Chelsea was the hottest neighborhood in New York, yeah. and then Tribeca, you know, the, the gate was so high that nobody could get in. And emerging markets, very much the way that uh, Chelsea evolved and Tribeca evolved and West Chelsea evolved. Uh, Fifteen years ago, nobody would have set foot in West Chelsea, and now it's some of the highest prices per square foot in the city. And, and this is one of the most fascinating things that we're seeing as, as a trend. Buyers are not so neighborhood-centric anymore. It doesn't have to be this neighborhood. They're going around and checking all different neighborhoods because they want to see where am I going to get a great... Yeah, I want to follow up on that, Tom, because that's an interesting point. Why aren't people as invested or interested in the neighborhood as much as they used to anymore? I think because every neighborhood in New York has kind of... Become the same. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of just all blended oh. together. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's a good or a bad thing, that some of the uniqueness of the neighborhoods is blurred? It's... It's a blessing and a curse. We're just talking about we're bullish on the Lower East Side. We see that that's the next frontier. Developers are there. The infrastructure is there. The neighborhood has a definite character. And we were recently speaking with a client about that it's inevitable that this will gentrify, but how much is too much? Mm -hmm. And when do we lose you know, the, the essence of the Lower East Side? And what I find so fascinating, and this just shows you the dynamics of how New York has changed, we've been talking nothing about, uh, we've been talking so much about Manhattan, we haven't even talked about Brooklyn or wherever <laughs> else. Remember there was a time that Brooklyn was like the hot area, and now nobody's going to Brooklyn, everybody's coming back over here. Oh, people, people are going to Brooklyn still. I mean, Brooklyn has really, I mean, there are parts of Brooklyn that are as expensive right. as Manhattan. Right, Williamsburg is just as expensive, yeah, sure. that's why to get out of that. <laughs> how much does uh, transportation options affect what you guys do? with the L shutting down, for example, a lot of people freaking out. Yes, that's also why I left yeah. Williamsburg. Transportation is tremendous. Proximity to a subway is one of the first questions somebody will ask us. Ride sharing is terrific. It makes our lives easier, but uh, traffic congestion has never been worse in New York City. So everybody is looking for convenience. And that can hurt projects. Projects that are not located 
uh, specifically new development projects that are not located near transportation or are not creating that infrastructure are, are going to suffer in the long run. So how have you seen interest in Williamsburg change yeah. because of this 15 month shutdown we, that's coming up of the exactly, L? Exactly, are we seeing rates going down as a result? It's temporary, Every, as, as long as there's a finish line you know, or a stop point on construction, everybody's going to be fine. It's very much like when the Second Avenue subway was being built, yeah. prices were going up in anticipation of completion. It wasn't wait for it to be completed and then prices will go up. So we're already seeing the effects of that. You guys work on billion dollar projects, but for those of us who are looking to buy our first apartment, for young homeowners, what is your advice that you have? The advice we give is to obviously get a good education in the market, see what your options are, compare and contrast. You know, this is what I can get here, this is what I can get there. And always try to push yourself a little bit. If you're buying, if you can afford a one bedroom and your financial advisor or your, or your uh, uh, mortgage broker says uh, one bedroom, Try to get the, the two bedroom. You know, push it a little bit more because in the end you'll be happy because as much resale value. Yeah, prices may be down a little bit now, but they're they're going to be back up again. Well, That's there's what a, and there's a science to it because and millennials are leading the way on this. They're waiting a little bit longer before purchasing their first place because a lot happens. You're out of college and uh, okay, I have my first job and I made some money. Let me buy a studio. Then you meet somebody. Okay, let's get a one bedroom. Then we're expanding our family. Now what do we do? And it's really hard in those transition periods to come out whole out of those transactions after you pay your transfer tax taxes, broker fees, any upgrades you may have made to the apartment. So the best thing to do is forecast where your life may be in five years. And that's a span of, after which we can t say to somebody, okay, you're, you're going to be okay. If we're moving from a two bedroom to a three bedroom, you're going to be all right. Very good advice. Speaking. Very I good advice. It. Tom Postilio and Mickey Conlin, brokers at Douglas Element. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you.